Congratulations to the Milwaukee Bucks on winning the 2021 NBA Championship. This final series right here, in my opinion, was the best NBA Finals we've seen as fans ever since the 2016 NBA Finals. It's so refreshing to see two new teams like this, two young teams come in and absolutely dominate, and they went head-to-head -head and had an amazing series. It was very fun to watch, and ultimately, the Bucks are victorious. My prediction was wrong, but it's still amazing to see a team like this that's gone through strong over the past eight years to build this championship caliber team along with a guy like Giannis it's just amazing to see a guy like him win so it's awesome to see the Bucks win and before I started off this video I just want to give a huge congrats to them now in today's video I'm basically just going to be going through this whole series and giving my full analysis on each and every one of the games so let's get straight into it as we all know if you watch the finals this year this series started off pretty one-sided the Phoenix Suns dominated the first two games and it was all because because of how Devin Booker and Chris Paul were able to dominate specifically against the drop coverage in the pick and roll and specifically against Brook Lopez in this playoff specifically he has not done a good job against very lethal guards on the perimeter in the pick and roll and drop coverage and Chris Paul and Devin Booker specifically were able to expose this Chris Paul had a combined 55 points and 22 of 39 from the field which is 56 percent and 7 of 12 from three which is an astounding 58 percent and 17 assists in those two games combined and Devin Booker had a combined 58 points on 20 of 44 shooting for a 45% field goal percentage and 8 of 20 from 3 for shooting 40% from 3 and also that was mostly while being guarded by one of the best defensive players in the league in Drew Holiday so both Booker and CB3 were able to dominate specifically getting mismatches for themselves not only on the perimeter and coming off of screens shooting jump shots but specifically in that pick and roll coverage overall the Phoenix Suns offense just functioned so well in both of these games. Not only did Booker and CB3 dominate, but their role players really stepped up too. They scored 118 points in both of these games, and they dominated defensively too. In one-on-one -on -one matchups, CP3 did a great job of containing Drew Holiday. Mikel Bridges pretty much completely shut down Chris Middleton in both of these games, and Giannis still dominated, especially in game two, but Aiton DeAndre Ayton was able to hold his own against him as well. And I think the Suns too were really able to shrink the floor a little bit more in these games just like I talked about in my NBA Finals preview video where I gave up my predictions that the Suns would win. I said if the Bucks aren't knocking down threes in this series it's going to be really tough for them because the Suns are going to shrink the floor. And in these first two games the Suns were able to do a pretty good job of that shrink the floor and make the three point shooters beat them and specifically in game two the Bucks three point shooters weren't, weren't able to do that. They only shot 9 of 31 for from three which is 29 percent and the suns held them to 105 in game one and 108 in game two the suns also dominated their transition game here i've talked about this a lot on the channel both of these teams really like to get out in transition but the suns dominated this part of the game they allowed their defense to lead to offense and both of these games were pretty one-sided the suns dominated both of these games overall and really the bucks came unprepared for the series just like they kind of did with the Nets series too and with the hawks series they didn't come in with a plan on how to guard trey young effect Effectively. And in this series, they came in unprepared too, but clearly they made some very effective adjustments. In Game 3, Giannis Antetokounmpo simply dominated this game. This was one of his best games of this final series, excluding that last Game 6 was just absolutely insane. But in this game, Giannis had 41 points, 13 rebounds, and 6 assists on 14 of 23 shooting 60% from the field, and also 13 of 17 from the free throw line, which is 77%, the most crucial part of Giannis's game. He's got to make those free throws. And I remember Mike Breen at one point in this game calling him Steph on Tedakumbo because he was hitting so many free throws and so easily which is so uncharacteristic for Giannis but anyway he actually absolutely dominated this game and DeAndre Ayton came out swinging in this game specifically at the start of the game offensively getting mismatches dominating in the post scoring easy baskets at the rim and I'm pretty sure he scored 14 of his 18 points in this game in the first quarter he was very efficient and he was very good defensively too he did a great job holding his own in the paint against Giannis but 
but then he got into foul trouble and the Bucks just dominated once he was out of the game. Aiden's def the defensive anchor of this team clearly and the Suns really missed him and specifically Giannis just went off with Aiden out of the game. They went on a couple big runs when he was out of the game. They dominated in transition and specifically Giannis dominated. And also the Bucks shot really well from three this, this game. They've moved the ball really well. There was their best game in my opinion as an overall offensive unit. They functioned really well together. They brought great energy. They out rebounded the Suns this game by 11 47 to 36 and they had a good game from Drew Holiday offensively as well. He put up 21 points on 8 of 14 shooting and 5 of 10 from 3 with 9 assists so they really needed his offensive production in this game. They got it and defensively he was insane and obviously he was insane this entire series but specifically in this game he was primarily guarding Devin Booker and held him to 10 points on only 3 of 14 shooting from the field and defensively for the Bucks, Lopez's minutes were limited since he really got exposed in the pick and roll in the first two games. He only played 21 minutes in this game, which is much less than he usually gets, but he still did play much better defensively. He was very good in the paint, and he held his own in the pick and roll way better than in games one and two, and the Bucks made the adjustment of getting Giannis more involved defensively in the pick and roll. I think this is something that we need to talk about more here because Giannis was, after game one and two, a lot more involved defensively, which he, obviously he needs to be as the reigning defensive player of the year. And obviously the Bucks made some good defensive adjustments in this game, held the Suns to 100 points, and had an amazing overall game. They won by 20 and they got themselves back in the series. I think Game 3 was really the crucial point and turning point of this series, but Games 4 and 5 were probably the most fun games to watch. Both of these games were extremely close and came down to the wire, but the Bucks clutched out both of them. Game 4 was a battle. The two main differences in this game was that Drew Holiday again played in incredible defense and this game he was primarily guarding Chris Paul and he held him to 10 points on 5 of 13 shooting barely allowed him to get even like any shots near the rim and only 7 assists and 5 turnovers obviously an extremely uncharacteristic game for Chris Paul here and it's all because of Drew Holiday's incredible defense and down the stretch in this game the Bucks used the Chris Middleton and Giannis pick and roll a ton I, th I thought they would use this more in the series but they really spammed it at the end of this game here at work really effectively it was unguardable for the Phoenix Suns this really allowed Milton to dominate in the mid-range area get a lot of open shots not only from three but also incredibly open shots in the mid-range area and dominate there and allowed Giannis to get a few easy buckets at the rim get to the line a little bit more and as we know in this game Middleton ended up clutching up and hitting a big hitting a few big shots down the stretch especially in the mid-range area and he ended up this game with 40 points now in game five this this was just a, simply an offensive slugfest. Both teams played amazing offensively and decent defensively too. I mean, both of these teams stuck to their defensive strategies, but both teams were just hitting tough shot after tough shot. Specifically for the Suns defensively, they they doubled Giannis a lot in this game, kind of shrunk the floor the most they have in this entire series, but the Bucks were simply hitting their jumpers. I mean, as a team, the Bucks shot 58% from the field in this, in this game and 50% from three, and the Suns shot 55% from the field and 68% from three as a team in the this game which is absolutely insane this uh, final score in this game ends up 123 to 119 for the Bucks they're able to clutch it out again this is the first game where all of the big three for the Bucks had amazing offensive games they all really meshed together all of them had almost 30 points on great efficiency good playmaking and great defense all of them played incredible Drew Holiday Chris Middleton and, and of course Giannis and then we all were never going to forget this huge play down the stretch where Drew Holiday ripped it away from Devin Booker, leads the break, and throws that incredible alley-oop to Giannis to ultimately win them the game. That was absolutely insane. This was by far the most fun game to watch in this series, and the Bucks clutched it out and went up 3-2. And then finally, we've got Game 6, and this one was the defensive battle. I was kind of waiting for a matchup like this, the two best defensive teams. Both teams played amazing defensively this game. The Bucks guarded extremely well in one-on-one -on -one matchups. Everyone held their zone in their matchup. They guarded the pick and roll very well. Obviously, a change from the start of the series where they were getting exposed there. They did a great job of contesting some mid-range shots from Chris Paul and Devin Booker and stopping DeAndre Ayton in the paint because they were really good on rotations in this game. We were able to shut him down 
done. The Suns also played really good defense. They shrunk the floor. They protected the paint. They forced a lot of turnovers and contested a lot of threes. But ultimately, the difference in this game was Giannis Antetokounmpo's historic offensive game, putting up an astounding 50 points in the deciding game, 14 rebounds, 5 blocks. He had some amazing defensive plays, 16 of 25 shooting, 64% from the field. And most importantly for Giannis, 17 of 19 from the line for almost a 90% free throw percentage this game. This is insane considering there was a series in this playoffs where he shot under 50% from the line. He has airballed free throws in this playoffs. It's been his number one doubt for his game, his number one struggle, and this is what wins him the NBA championship. Extreme irony here. It was amazing to see him knock down these free throws down the stretch with the 65,000 outside the Bucks arena, putting their hands up, doing the magic hands, hoping he knocks down some clutch free throws. He was incredible, obviously, this game, and he was doing everything. He was dominating the paint, shooting some fadeaway jumpers, hitting his free throws, getting out in transition, dominating there, posting up, playing amazing defense, getting these chase down blocks. It was just amazing to see this historic performance from Giannis. Because of their team defense and because of Giannis's historic game six, the Bucks pulled it off and won the 2021 NBA championship last night. I mean, what a journey for the Milwaukee Bucks to get here. I mean, Giannis and Chris Middleton have been together for eight years now. They were one of the worst teams in the NBA eight years ago to now moving their way up, becoming a contender, but being known as so-called playoff chokers. Obviously, they came up short in 2018, 2019, 2020, getting beaten five by the, by the Miami Heat. And then not only that, but in these playoffs, having those same narratives, being down 2 nothing versus the Nets, being down one nothing versus the Hawks and two nothing versus the Suns to NBA champions. They obviously defied the odds in this NBA playoffs. I'm so happy for the guys on this team, specifically the big three. We look at Giannis, who obviously came from Rhodes to Riches. I mean, he's just had like a tough life so far. He had his father pass away. He was continuously slept on by NBA scouts. He wasn't supposed to be anything big. Now he's a two-time MVP, Defensive Player of the Year, and a Finals MVP. You've got Chris Middleton, who's continuously been been doubted as well. He was picked in the second round. You've got Drew Holiday, who's always been an underdog, criminally underrated, gotten hate in this series. And I'm just so happy for all these guys. Even like Mike Budenholzer, who's gotten so much hate throughout this playoffs, proved that he's not as bad a coach as people think he is. And I'm just so happy for this team. Even though I was cheering for the Suns in the series, it's amazing to see this team win. Finals MVP obviously goes to Giannis for his historic NBA Finals performance, putting up 35 points per game in this series, 13 rebounds, 5 assists, 2 blocks, had some incredible signature blocks, alley block in Game 4, uh, a lot of signature like chase down blocks in this series, it was incredible to watch him play on the defensive end of the floor overall as well. A very efficient 62% from the field, 66% from the line, which obviously is very good for Giannis standards and 66% true shooting which is around a plus nine relative true shooting an amazing historic performance from Giannis and he now becomes one of three players in NBA history to win an MVP a defensive player of the year and a finals MVP he joins only Michael Jordan and Akeem Olajuwon and Giannis has obviously really moved himself up the all-time rankings with this historic performance and winning the NBA championship he's finally checked that off of his list and I feel so happy for him. So there you have it. That's my full analysis on the 2021 NBA Finals. It was one of the most fun NBA Finals that I've personally watched as an NBA fan during my time watching the NBA. So thank you all for watching this video. If you're new, be sure to subscribe. I'm going to be grinding on the channel after this video. I have a huge ranking series plan where I'm doing the top 10 from each position, my big top 50 list, and other ranking videos. So stay tuned for that. Stay tuned for more analysis. Thank you guys for watching this video comment down below your thoughts on today's video and your thoughts on the NBA finals and I'll see you all in the next video